We can extend our fraction universe by talking about proper and improper fractions and mixed numbers. So what's a proper fraction? In the fraction a over b, the denominator b tells us how many pieces we've cut our unit into, and the numerator a tells us how many of those pieces we've taken. Since you can't take more than you have, and only a very selfish person would take everything, we expect a to be smaller than b. But what if it isn't? So for example, let's draw a picture of 4 fourths. What's it equivalent to? Now the denominator 4 tells us we've cut a cake into 4 equal pieces. The numerator 4 tells us that we've taken 4 of those 4 pieces. But that's the whole cake. This means that 4 fourths is 1 cake. And this suggests the following. For a not equal to 0, a eighths is equal to 1. Now, let's think about this a little bit more. In the fraction a over b, we've cut a cake into b pieces, and we take a of those pieces. Now, mathematicians like to generalize ideas, and so we can generalize this fraction a over b if we cut a cake into b pieces, and then we take a of those pieces, or, wait for it, pieces of the same size. So for example, suppose we want to draw a picture of 3 over 1. What? Oh, right. Remember, how you speak influences how you think. We should always read fractions as a beasts. So this is really 3 oneths. What's a oneth? It's what you get when you cut a cake into one piece. So I'll take my cake and I'm going to cut it into one piece. I don't actually cut it because it's already one piece. So in other words, it's a whole cake. So three once, we take a cake and cut it into one piece. In other words, we don't cut it at all. And then we take three pieces exactly the same size. But that's the same as three cakes. And so this suggests the following in general. For any a, a over 1, a once, is equal to a. So now we can define an improper fraction. A proper fraction is a fraction where the numerator is strictly less than the denominator. 5 eighths, 3 tenths, or this horrifying thing. An improper fraction has a numerator greater than or equal to the denominator, so 9 eighths, 12 tenths, or this horrifying thing. The most important thing to remember about improper fractions, improper fractions are treated in exactly the same way as proper fractions. So let's draw a picture of 5 thirds. What is it equivalent to? So the thirds says we're going to cut a cake into three pieces and take five of those pieces. But one cake only gives us three thirds. And that means we need a few more pieces of the same size. So we need to cut up another cake. And so we see that five thirds is one cake and two-thirds of another cake. So we can write this as five-thirds is one plus two-thirds, which gives us the sum of a proper fraction and a whole number. And this leads us to the next important concept, and that's the idea of a mixed number. A mixed number is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. We write it by juxtaposing the whole number and the proper fraction. In other words, we put them right next to each other. So this sum, 1 plus 2 thirds, we would write as 1 2 thirds, and we typically read this as 1 and 2 thirds. So for example, let's try to reduce 38 twelfths to a mixed number. 
First, it's useful to remember that this is an improper fraction. Our numerator is larger than the denominator, and improper fractions are treated in exactly the same way as proper fractions. And what that means is that everything we can do with a proper fraction, we can also do to an improper fraction. And one of those things is to reduce the fraction. Now, it's worth keeping in mind, we don't actually have to do this. And big numbers shouldn't bother you, but it is easier to work with small numbers. So let's try to reduce this fraction by removing any common factors. And it's worth keeping in mind, a factor is only relevant if it's a factor of both numerator and denominator. In this case, we note that 12 has a lot of factors, but 38 doesn't. 38 factors as 2 times 19, and there are no other factors. And so we look to see if 12 has a factor of 2 or 19. And it does. 12 is 2 times 6. We can remove that common factor and have our improper fraction in reduced form, 19 6. So how you speak influences how you think, so we should read this as 19 6, and we might make the following observations. 6 6 is equal to 1. Well, that means 12 6 is equal to 2. 18 6 is equal to 3. So now let's put it together. We have 19 6. That's 18 sixths and one more sixth. So we have our whole number part, 3, and our fractional part, 1 sixth. And so 19 sixths becomes a mixed number, 3 and 1 sixth. Now it's worth making a comparison. 19 sixths is equal to 3 and 1 sixth. But if we read this fraction as 19 divided by 6 and do the division, we get 3, remainder 1. And this leads to the following general theorem about mixed numbers. Let a divided by b equal some quotient with remainder r. Then a beats is the mixed number q and r beats. And an important idea to keep in mind, don't memorize theorems. Understand concepts. In this case, the crucial concept is that this improper fraction 19 6 was 18 6 which is a whole number, and 1 6 left over. So, for example, let's convert 5 and 3 8 to an improper fraction. In truth, there's no really good reason to do this, but we'll do it anyway. So our denominator 8 tells us we're dealing with 8s, and so the thing we might notice is that 1 is 8 8 2 is 16 8 3 is 24 eighths, 4 is 32 eighths, and 5 is 40 eighths. We also have 3 eighths, so 5 and 3 eighths is going to be 40 and 3 eighths, which we can write as the fraction 43 eighths. And since there's no good reason to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction, it's not worth comparing 5 and 3 eighths equals 43 eighths and noting that 5 times 8 plus 3 is 43, and this suggests a theorem not worth memorizing. You can convert the mixed number q and r b to the improper fraction q times b plus r over b. Again, don't memorize theorems, understand concepts. And here the important concept is that 5 and 3 eighths, well 5 is 40 eighths, 3 eighths is 3 more eighths, and so altogether we have 43 eighths.